Oke, okay, thank you for the time, Lelet. Uh, selamat datang untuk acara IELTS webinar masterclass hari ini yang akan dipandu oleh Miss Jacqueline Fisher atau nanti bisa dipanggil dengan Miss Jackie. Uh, apabila ada pertanyaan yang ingin diajukan selama sesi webinar, silahkan bisa diketik di chat box atau Q&A box. Kalau misalkan kesulitan dengan bahasa Inggris, silahkan diketik dengan bahasa Indonesia. Okay, thank you, Lelet. Thank you, Ruli. And then next one, we also have our representative from Vietnam. Hi to one, would you mind to please turn on your camera and greet our participants today? Thank you. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, this is Thuyen from uh, IDP Vietnam. I'm based in uh, Da Nang City currently. Um, welcome all of you to the um, event of IDP. Um, we hope that you enjoy the Um, the webinar today. Um, xin chào tất cả các bạn uh, đang tham dự buổi uh, webinar ngày hôm nay do IDP uh, tổ chức ha. Thì hiện tại uh, chị Thuận đang uh, uh, làm việc tại IDP uh, Việt Nam, uh, cụ thể là Đà Nẵng. Thì hôm nay uh, là uh, trong cái buổi sự kiện này thì khi mà các bạn uh, theo dõi um, cái người trainer là cô um, Fisher thì nếu mà có vấn đề hoặc là câu hỏi gì thì các bạn có thể gửi vào trong ô Q&A ô um, chat box ha. Và sẽ có panelist làm cụ thể nếu như mà các bạn muốn hỏi những thông tin liên quan đến Việt Nam chẳng hạn thì các bạn cũng có thể hỏi luôn thì uh, chị và tất cả các um, các bạn ở đây sẽ um, hỗ trợ các bạn nếu như mà các bạn có câu hỏi ha các bạn có thể hỏi bằng uh, uh, tiếng Anh ha nếu mà các bạn uh, tự tin cảm ơn các bạn cảm ơn so much Swan all right and next one we also have our representative from Thailand hi Nuri Rat Hi, Willet. Hi, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for joining today. I think this session will be really useful. So I hope you all stay tuned until the end of the session with Jacqueline and everyone here. สวัสดีนะคะน้องๆแล้วก็ uh, ผู้ชมชาวไทยทุกคนที่เข้ามาร่วมจอยในเซสชั่นนี้นะคะเซสชั่นนี้ก็จะเป็นประโยชน์อย่างมากกับทุกๆคนที่ตั้งใจฟัง
this webinar alone probably won't be enough. Like any exam, you do need to prepare for the IELTS, but hopefully it will get you started in a, in a good way. So uh, let's get into it. Um, yeah, so, so as I mentioned, this is your webinar, and as the other host co-host mentioned, so please feel free to use the chat box to ask me questions so that you know I can, if I'm not covering something that you want to know, please put it in the chat box. You can also put questions in the Q&A box, and I will definitely see them at the end. Yeah, so um, we will also have some polls just so I get to find out a bit about you and a bit of review as well so maybe would it be okay to have the first poll just so i can find out a bit about you all and, and your needs and why you're doing ielts is that poll ready yes jackie Give me thank you all right. here we go so just to find out whether you've taken the test before and what's the minimum score you need of course we all want the highest possible but what's the minimum and then which test you're planning to take, academic or general. So I'll just let that run for a moment. And it's nice to, the, um, to know that we have people from across the region. I don't know if you just want to let me know in the chat where you're joining us from. I'm in Singapore with Lilette. I'm actually not at my Hobbit hole, even though I look like I am. <laughs> I think that's in New Zealand, but I'm not in New Zealand. So if you want to let me know where you are in the chat box, that would be great. And I'll just let this run. Because I think we probably have people from all across the region. Okay, so I might end the poll here. Let's have a look. So most of you have not taken the test before, but some of you have. So if you have a specific question, please feel free to ask in the chat. And then the band scores, oh, we quite a lot of people need a higher score, seven to eight, that's interesting. And then some need the six to seven. Okay, and then we've, oh, look, quite a lot of people doing academic and a few doing general, but don't worry, we'll cover both tests this evening. Some of the tests are the same for academic and general and academic, usually people do that for studying in an English speaking educational institution. And then general people usually do that when they want to migrate to an English speaking country. Okay, so I'll just stop my share. All right, good. So thanks for sharing that. Um, I will refer to this uh, masterclass pack sometimes, and you can also have a look at that in your own time, because there are some really good models there, particularly for the writing that you can have a look at. So you should have been, you should have received that masterclass pack. Yeah, so this evening we're going to um, really think about how you can get that band score that you need. And of course, a lot of it's about practice, but the people who do best in IELTS are people who really immerse themselves in English and try to use English as much as possible. Yeah, so tonight we'll talk about the assessment. What are the examiners looking for? So hopefully that will help you so you know what you have to do. And then what should, what's to avoid, you know, what are the things that are a big sort of a no-no with your IELTS? Yeah. So we talked about academic or general. And so it's, it's, you don't have to know right now. I saw that some of you were unsure, but before you take the test, you need to know because you either register for academic or you register for general. Yeah. So how do you find out? Check with the institution or the body that has asked you to do IELTS. And then we see the band scores here. So um, quite a lot of you needed this seven and eight. So this is quite a high score. There's no perfect 10 in IELTS, it's a perfect nine. So nine is, is the perfect score. So seven and eight are quite high scores. Some of you needed a bit lower here, five and six. And in IELTS, there's no fail. It's just if you um, don't get the score that you need. So, IELTS, we call it the IELTS test, but you know, it's actually four tests that you have to do, isn't it? So you, listening, reading and writing, you do all together. Yeah, all one after the other. So um, uh, I just wanted to ask, like, do you think there's a break between the tests? Do you think you get a coffee break? You do your listening, then you have a little break. 
What do you think? Yes or no? Is the chat, I'm just wondering if the chat is active. Is the chat activated? Because I haven't seen any messages in the chat. I see some people typing in the in the Q and A box. Yeah. I'm sorry, Jackie. I just activated. Ah, the okay, great. Okay, good. I was wondering why everyone was really quiet. I was like, okay, no one wants to type today. I'm sorry, <laughs> no guys. No, no, no worries at all. It's fine. I think um, Zoom have changed their feature a little bit. Yeah, there's no great. So. There's yeah. no yeah. The chat isn't automatically activated anymore. Um. So, uh, yeah, the, the the three tests here just run all the way through. So what happens if you need to use the bathroom? You can, of course, you can go, but it um, you don't get extra time. Yeah, so you don't want to be leaving the room. And in the listening test, you cannot leave the room once it starts because it just runs all the way through. So these three tests will take you almost three hours. Yeah, and then um, there are only a few things you can take into the room with you. Do you know what you can take into the test room? Any ideas? Yeah, you can take a bottle of water that's clear. And you don't need to take a pencil because um, all the stationery is provided. So you can take something to keep you warm, like if air conditioning is very cold. Unfortunately, no snacks. Um, and your ID, yeah, I think either you, you might leave your ID in the locker or, or maybe you take it in, I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, that's right. But you very few things that you take in. Now the speaking is done separately. Okay, so speaking can be before or it, could, it can be after. So speaking in IELTS is uh, special because you do it with a live examiner. Sometimes it's on a video link and sometimes it's face-to-face, -face. depends on which country you're in, but, the, but they're live. Yeah, it's not just speaking into a blank computer. And the speaking test is the shortest of the four tests. So we're gonna talk about all of these this evening, we'll go through some tips for all of them. My next question to you is, are you planning to take the test on computer or paper-based? Do you want to tell me in the chat? People often ask me what the difference is. It's the same test, it's just how you do it. So if it's computer, you're doing the listening, reading, writing all on the keyboard. And it's good if you're familiar with using a computer and the different um, computer uh, commands and everything that you use. Paper-based is the old fashioned style, right? With pencil. Yeah, so, so Fadila is saying she prefers paper. I also prefer the paper-based, but that's kind of because of my age group, I think. Yeah, so people often ask me which one I do. I probably do paper because I prefer reading on, on a hard copy. If you do it on computer, you have to read it on the screen. You do all the tests on the computer. But it really depends on you. You have to think of yourself. You get your results faster, computer-based, three to five days. And um, you can usually do it more often as well. But it's the same test. Yeah, and some people much prefer computer. So it really depends on you. Also depends what your country is offering sometimes. Okay, so we should get in and start with each of these four tests because we've got a lot to cover. Um, I just want to ask before we get into this, which test are you most worried about? Do you want to put in the chat? Which one is, is do you think is hard? Listening. Oh, that's interesting. Reading. Speaking. <laughs> okay, I see quite a lot of writings coming up now. Yeah, most people are most worried about the writing test. But of course, some people are not. I see someone, someone said reading, obviously. Okay, so yeah, reading can be challenging for some people. But for, I would say for the majority of people, it's the writing. So we're going to look at all of the four tests. So hopefully, you know, you'll get some tips for each one. Okay, so there's a lot to cover. And, you know, we could really spend two weeks rather than two hours on this. So I will do my best to move through it. Okay, let's start with speaking. Um, now, the speaking test, who knows how long? We just saw how long it was. It's a shorter test. And how many parts are there? Do you want to let me know in the chat? Yeah, it's three parts and 11, it's actually 11 to 14 minutes. That's right. So the speaking test is the same for academic and general. Yeah, and it's divided into these three parts. 
Part one and part two are all about you, talking about yourself. Part three is not about you. It's a general discussion. So let's explore these uh, in a moment. But first of all, what do you think the examiner is listening to when you speak? What, what are they listening to with your speech? They actually only care about four things. Yeah, the grammar is one of them, Marietta, yes. Your accent is actually not part of it. It's something to do with that, but not your accent, because everybody has an accent, different accent. It's your pronunciation, yeah. You need to be clear, but it's not about your accent. So we've got grammar, we've got pronunciation. There are two more. Your fluency, yes. Can you keep talking? And your coherence. So this goes together, fluency and coherence. And there's one more, the vocab, the words that you use. So let's talk about these four, because this is what the examiner is listening to when you talk. So we really got to be mindful of these four so that we, we think about how we're talking. Yeah, so that we can, if possible, impress the examiner. Yeah, so fluency and coherence. What is that? That means, can you keep talking? But also, is it logical? Some people can talk on and on, but what are you talking about? No idea. Coherence often means you're linking words. So things like, oh, first of all, on the other hand, uh, on top of that, oh, overall, this kind of thing. Yeah, so to make it logical and also being able to talk continuously. Then lexical resource is the fancy word for your vocab. So this means trying to use words that are more interesting, it's particularly if you want seven or higher, more unusual words, more words that are a bit more sophisticated, but they also need to be correct. So you've got to balance correct and, um, and, and interesting, yeah, unusual. So that's the next thing they're looking at. Then your grammar. So this has two parts. So we want to be correct. Yeah, so you want for a seven, you need to be about 70 to 75% correct with your grammar. Eight would be 80 to 85%. But it's also this thing called range. Because I can say something like, I like Singapore, it is hot. And those two sentences were correct, but they're very simple sentences. But if I combine them, although I like Singapore very much, it tends to be hot. This is a better sentence with two parts, what we call two clauses. So things like although, however, whereas, while, despite, even though, all these words make your grammar more complex. So we try to use this kind of language. And then the last one they're listening to, as we said, is your pronunciation. So it's not so much your accent, it's how clear you are and how correct things like stress and intonation. Yeah, particularly if you want a higher score. So the big tip here is what do we do when we're nervous? We tend to rush, right? Because you want to get out of there. So you tend to blah, 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 blah. You don't want to do that. You want to be a nice steady pace and clear and move your mouth yeah? so the examiner can understand you. So we don't want to rush too fast. Of course, not too slow, a nice steady pace. So this is important because if you want a seven, then you'd have to have a seven for fluency and coherence seven for your vocab, seven for your grammar, seven for your pronunciation. All of them would need to be seven. That's how the examiner marks you. And then they take an average. And so we have to keep thinking of these four things in the speaking. So let's briefly go through the three parts. So first of all, the examiner is going to ask you questions about yourself. It's quite nice. Now the secret is to expand. They don't want one word answers trying to say two or three ideas for every question. So they might say, let's talk about your favorite food. What is your favorite food? So if I say sushi, is that okay as an answer? Sushi. Not really, right? Yeah, it's too short. So the secret is to use the B word because and give reasons, reasons and examples. Yeah, so, oh, my favorite food is sushi because I really like the combination of textures, the stickiness of the rice and the crispiness of the seaweed, something like that, yeah? 
So we're trying to say two or three ideas for each question. But in part one, there are going to be about 12 questions. So you don't have to give a big long speech for every question, just two or three ideas for each one. So that's part one. Part two is the, is the weird part of the test. So there are different lengths of time. So in part two, you have one minute. What's the one minute for? One minute to do what? Any ideas? One minute to prepare, that's right. So you're given a topic. So, and it looks like this, it's given a card. You're also given some paper and pencil and you have one minute to prepare and take notes. And then you have two minutes. What's the two minutes for? Two minutes is to talk, yeah, so, but you don't know how long two minutes is. Your job is you just keep talking until the examiner says, thank you. That's your job. Keep talking till the examiner says, thank you. And it's two minutes. So for many people, they have trouble getting to two minutes. That's the thing. So we do need to practice this. So if you've got a topic like this, describe a school you went to when you were young. There are some points here that they suggest you talk about. You don't have to follow these points, but they're to give you ideas. So how many points are there? How many points on this card? Four, yeah, there's always one down here. Okay, so you, it's good to use these to keep you logical and give you ideas of what to say. Now, if you run out of, you've finished all the four points, but it's not two minutes, one thing you can do is go back to one of the points. So maybe you go back to this point, which teachers you remember. So go back and say, oh, another teacher I remember is, you know, Mrs. Jones, the maths teacher, because she was really mean or whatever. Yeah. And another thing you can do, if you really can't say any more about this school, then you can talk about another school and then you can start again. Yeah, but you must speak for two minutes. Yeah. Now, the third part is what we call the discussion. And so this is a bit different. So part one and part two, you were talking about who? You were talking about yourself. But part three is not about you. It is your opinion, but your examples must be about the world and society and your country. It's general. If you talk about yourself, the examiner will say, but what about in your country? Part three is connected to part two. So remember part two was about the school. So then part three, let's talk about schools. What kinds of school are there in your country? Yeah, so it's not about you, right? So if I do ask you that, what kinds of school are there in your country? What, what, what? What could you say? So if I was talking about Australia, where I was born and I, where I went to school, I'd say, well, in Australia, I think you can broadly divide schools into government schools and private schools. Yeah, same as Janelle. Yeah, exactly. And then I could give an example. So in part three, the secret is to give reasons and examples. Okay, so you do need to expand. In part three, the questions become more um, conceptual or more abstract. So if we come down to the harder questions, how will education change in the future? Okay, so this is not so concrete, like how many, what, what kinds of school are there? How will it change in the future? You have to use your like imagination and, and think. Yeah, so the thing about the part three here is we do need to practice these because these are not what we talk about every day with our friends. Yeah, so we have to practice discussing these. But the secret is just give reasons and examples. If you don't know what to say, then say that rather than be in silence. So you can say, oh, gee, that's an unusual question. I haven't thought about that. Maybe it could be. So like talk it out. Yeah, so that's part three. And my big tip also with um, part three is that it's, um, when you want to, don't, when you give an example, don't say personally or in my family, because it's supposed to be general, right? So instead you can say people 
instead of saying me and my family, just say people do this and people do that. That's a big tip for part three. So let's watch a little bit of someone doing part three. So this, this uh, guy is from Nepal and he actually got a uh, band 7.5, which is quite a high score, isn't it? Remember if we looked at those bands before. So we'll just watch a bit of him doing the part three, this um, discussion part, just to see what the questions are like. I won't show you the whole thing. Why do you think politicians and movie stars are famous and popular throughout the world? Movie stars, undoubt, movie stars and uh, singers undoubtedly are famous all over the world because of what they do. Um, they entertain people and the way they do things. Um, and uh, politicians, I think, um, gain attention of on to ten, uh, tend to gain attention on their on their take over the country of what they're doing for the betterment of the world, for the betterment of the country. Sorry, and uh, what steps they are taking to do much um, better, or how they're going about it. How would you compare the famous people today with the famous people of the past? Um, big difference between the two. Um, back then, there wasn't so much of media attention, I could say so. Um, as far as I know, um, people used to be, people used, famous people used to, con they used to be role models and they used to be good role models. But these days, famous people are role models, yet for many of them, students as well as adults, but uh, can we call them all good models? Um, I don't think so. So do you really think that famous people in the past behaved better or is it just that we don't know what they did in um, their private life? It's probably a bit of both. Mm. Um, they behaved um, they behaved a lot better because since we've, we've become more advanced these days, we can do what we feel like. Um, these days, uh, most celebrities and famous people take things for granted and do, do what they like. What kinds of people do you think will be famous in the future? Um, continuing to be uh, movie stars and singers and uh, some people who really make changes to the world, um, I could say so. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to leave it there just because talk about time. What do you think? So he got a pretty high score. Band 7.5 means that some of his, uh, remember the four things? Some of these were eight, which is very good, and some of them were seven, which is good. So let's see what the examiners said. So if we think about his fluency, can he keep talking? Yes, he can. He has a few little hesitations here and there, but not really, and not, not, not hunting for basic words, right? So he, he's fluent. He can speak easily. And he, when he pauses, it's just because he's thinking of ideas, and he has these linking words that are good. Now his vocab, did you catch any nice words that he used with his vocab? Like he said, the betterment of society, I think that was pretty nice. So his vocab, he can talk about all the topics. However, his vocab is not what we would say very good. He makes a few mistakes. We didn't hear all of them. Um, and so this part, he's more of a seven for his vocab. Then his grammar, his grammar is strong. So he doesn't really make, he makes very few little errors. So his grammar is up at the band eight as well. And then his pronunciation, was he very fast the way he talked? Do you think he spoke fast? No, right, just a nice steady pace and he was clear. He had a few sounds like instead of both, he said boat and instead of went, he said vent, but we could easily understand him. So yeah, so that, that one, he also was an eight. So he's quite a, a high scoring uh, candidate. So let's just, me just sum up with some overall advice for the speaking test. So it's important to uh, practice speaking as much as possible. Yeah, in as many different situations as you can. So don't be too fast, don't rush. Nice steady pace, a bit like Ashish, that guy. Remember in part two, you want to make some notes. Yeah, so that you have something to talk about. So write, you can't write a script, it's impossible. Just write some key words. So instead of pausing and being silent, try to speak what's in your mind. Like, oh, let me think about that. Hmm, I haven't thought about that before. Try not to say, how do you, how do you say? 
because that means you don't have the vocabulary. So try to avoid that phrase. If you want a high score for your pronunciation, you need, you shouldn't speak in a flat way. You're, you need to use emphasis and uh, put the stress on the important words. Yeah, if you want a higher score for pronunciation. And if you make a little mistake and you don't realize, don't worry about it. It's not, the, the bands don't come from one mistake. Yeah, but if you make a mistake and you realize straight away, then you can just correct yourself. It's totally fine. So remember to expand at least three ideas for each question, giving reasons and examples. Sometimes you can argue with yourself. You can say, oh, maybe it could be this, but it could also be this. That's fine to do that too. Yes, try, don't memorize answers. Practice, please practice, especially part three questions, but don't memorize because it sounds very artificial. When you give your opinion, it's good to do it in different ways. So you're not always saying, I think, I think. Yeah, so as far as I'm concerned, in my view, yeah, overall, I'd say. Now, the part three topics, they come up um, quite often and they are things that are listed here. Things like education, health, fitness, travel, the environment, communication, entertainment. These topics come up a lot. So it's really good to start following the news, because actually in the news, they cover all these. Not so you have to remember everything in the news, but it just gives you some examples that you can use. Can you paraphrase topic with relative clauses? Yeah, paraphrasing is a great thing to do. It shows that you have good vocabulary. So paraphrasing means saying it in a different way. So if you can just not repeat what the examiner says, but say it in a different way, that is great, fantastic thing to do. Okay, so that's the speaking test. Um, I don't know if we, did we have a poll for that? I can't remember. Yes, Jackie, we have. Oh, okay, okay. It's just, just a little review to see if you were listening. <laughs> Can everyone see the poll? Can you see? All right, become that answers. Okay, we'll just let that run for a few moments and then we're gonna move on to writing. Okay, so writing, we, we'll take a little bit of time to talk about the writing because there's a lot to cover under writing, but I'll just let this run. And I think a lot of you were saying that writing is the one that you're worried about the most. So we will spend a bit of time. Yeah. Also with the writing, academic and general are different. So we will, you know, We'll talk about both, don't worry. Yeah, but it will just take a little bit longer. Okay, I might just end the poll just because of time. So sorry if you missed out on doing that. Now, do you need to use a British or American accent? No, the accent just has to be clear. Like I don't have a British or American accent, but I would say I'm a native speaker. Yeah, so it's more about being clear than copying an accent. So if in part two, you've run out of things to say, can you just stop? No, you must keep going until the examiner says thank you. Okay, so we want to practice being able to speak for two minutes. And in part three, you should talk about your personal experience. No, part three is general. If you talk about your personal experience, the examiner will say, but what about in general? What about in your country? So use the word people instead of me in part three. Okay, great. All right, so writing test. Um, oops. Yes, so the writing test, we have 60 minutes and two things to do. So there's a lot to do within the writing test. If you're doing academic, your task one is you describe something with words and your task two is an essay. What about if you're doing general? What's your task one for general? You wanna let me know? It's a letter, yes, that's right. And then your task two is also an essay. Okay, just the topics are different, but the method is the same. So, you know, we were talking about the scoring. So we will see that writing and speaking are quite similar. So two of the things the examiner looks at are exactly the same. Do you know what they are? So remember speaking, the examiner's looking at four areas. Two, in the writing, two of them are the same. 
grammar. Yes, 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 your grammar and your vocab, exactly. And there's also coherence there as well. So we have, these are the four things that the examiner looks at with your writing. Task achievement or response. So did you answer the question? Did you stay on the topic? Cohesion and coherence, there's the coherence. Is it logical? Did you use those linking words to make it flow? And very important, did you use paragraphs? In the IELTS writing, you must have nice separate paragraphs. They are very clear paragraphs or you get a low score. And then these two are the same, your vocab and your grammar. But under vocab here, because it's writing, we also have spelling and there isn't a spell check. And many of us aren't very good at spelling anymore, are we? So there's, we have to think about our spelling. And under the grammar, again, we want these complex sentences and correct, but also punctuation, full stops, capital letters, commas. Okay, so again, the examiner's looking at these four. To get a seven, you need seven for answering the question, seven for your structure, <clears throat> excuse me, seven for your vocab, seven for your grammar, then you get a seven. So we keep thinking of these four when we're writing. Okay, so we're going to talk about academic task one first. So if you're doing general, please feel free to go and get a drink and a snack. And this will take me probably about 15 minutes or so, um, 10 to 15 minutes. So come back about then, about in about 10 minutes. So yeah, so if you're general, pop off and, and, and have a little break, but please come back. Okay, you're getting hungry. Good, good, go get a snack and come back. All right, so academic people, remind me, what are you doing for your task one? What are you doing, task one writing? Yes, you're reporting. Yep, you're describing something. That's right. How many words and how many minutes do you have? 150 words, that's it. And they tell you to spend 20 minutes. Yeah, so you don't have a lot of time. We need a way to do this quite quickly. So our role here with task one academic is to take something visual and turn it into words. Yeah, visuals into words. And so this is what it could look like. Of course, there are different types of things that you have to describe, but it could be like this. Sometimes it's two things. Don't worry. We're just going to talk about this one and then this one. Yeah, so let's, let me try to tell you a method that hopefully is quite fast. Okay, so when you get this, first of all, you have to read the instructions. Always the most important thing in IELTS, follow the instructions. The charts show the number of Japanese tourists traveling abroad between 1985 and 1995 and Australia's share of the Japanese tourist market. <clears throat> Summarize the information, select and report main features and make comparisons. This part here, it's always the same, no matter what you're doing for your academic task one. This part is the same. This is our job. Summarize, pull out the trends, compare. We always have to do that. Now, this is what we're looking at. So I always check the time, the tense. So is this in the past or the present or the future between 1985 and 1995? I always check this. What, are, what time are we talking about here? Past, right? This is the past, 85 to 95, yeah. Now I have to spend some time before we write, we have to look at what we're going to talk about and pull out the main trends. How do we do this? I ask myself some questions. So Japanese tourists traveling abroad. So I look at the vertical axis, millions. So be careful, it's not two, four, six, it's four million, six million. So check, and here are the years. Now I ask myself, overall, is the trend going up or the trend going down? Up or down? Yes, it's overall going up. See, start to the end. Now I look at particular points. When it's a graph like this, I always look at the start. And a good word that we can use is approximately. So at, in 1985, how many, approx how many Japanese tourists traveling approximately? Five million, yeah? Five, not five, but five million. Careful, it's millions, right? Okay, now, and at the next, I check the end. How many at the end? How many at the end? 15, yeah, about approximately 15 million. That's right. Okay, 
Now I also look for the peak. Which year is the highest here? Which is the peak? Which year? Yes, so the peak and the end are the same here. And then the next thing I do is look for any interesting trends that I should mention. So when it's all the same, we don't have to really talk about it. Oh, look here. We should highlight this. It dropped back. Yeah. And then maybe we can highlight this. It's kind of this just same, but then it increases again. So we're going to want to highlight this year. Let's have a look at the other one, Australia's share. So how many went to Australia? So again, we've got two, four, six, but this time it's percent. So be careful, it's not millions, it's percent. And here we have the years. So at the start, we look at the start. Oh no, first of all, overall trend up or down? Overall trend up or overall trend down? Up again, yeah, pretty much. So now we look at each in detail. So at the start, how many percent? Very small. 2% only, that's right. Now at the end, 1995, how many percent were visiting Australia? Maybe just about 6%, that's right. Now where's the peak? Which year is the peak? Mm, is it 89? Yeah, it's here, 94. So the peak is not the end. So we wanna highlight the peak, which is gonna be just over 6%, isn't it? And then you're right, we're also going to want to highlight this year when it dropped back, similar to the other one, it dropped back. So we would also highlight this. Okay, so now we've worked out what we're going to talk about. We'd better start writing. So you have three jobs. You need your introduction. You need to pull out all the main features, which we just did, the main trends, and describe with lots of numbers. And then we need to write an overview, but the overview does not have any numbers. Okay, so let's have a look what I mean. So first we write the introduction. The fastest way is to paraphrase. So just rewrite the topic, and but don't copy it because they're not your words. Change the words. So the charts, the chart and graph, show, compare, the <clears throat> number of Japanese tourists, the number of Japanese traveling abroad, excuse me, who spent their holidays overseas. Yeah, so just rewrite the topic for the introduction. Next, we want to pull out all the main features. Now, when you have two things like this, the easiest way to do it is just describe this one and then describe this one. Otherwise, it gets very confusing and messy. Okay, so if you have two things, just talk about this one, talk about this one. <clears throat> so we already pulled out the main trends, isn't, didn't we? So let's see how, how it's written. In 1985, only about 5 million Japanese traveled abroad, after which the number increased steadily. By 1990, the figure had more than doubled to 11 million. Apart from a slight drop the next year, the following year, sorry, to just over 10 million, the upward trend continued until the end of the period when numbers reached over 15 million. So can you see that we've mentioned all these main trends with numbers so they we can't just say it increased it rose you must say from what to what so that the examiner could draw it you must include the data now remember our third job is to use the comparing language compare things so in this paragraph there are at least two comparing phrases can you find them one is in line two and one is in line four. Can you find the comparing words? Type in the chat. Doubled, the figure doubled. That's more like, um, you could say that after this one, but comparing is like more like before and after. So after which, that's comparing before and after. And apart from, yes, exactly. We must include this comparing language, okay? One more thing I want to describe is, this, is, is uh, the language we use to describe. So increase steadily. See this word steadily? It makes it more interesting, more interesting vocab rather than just increased. How did it increase? Steadily. A slight drop, not a huge drop, a slight drop. So this kind of vocabulary is important. Now let's look at the describing the other one, the other graph, this one. 
while Australia was the destination for under 2% of Japanese tourists in 1985, this percentage had risen to over 6% by 1994. The proportion grew consistently apart from the slight fall in 1990, 4.5% to 4%. After reaching its 1994 peak, the percentage declined marginally to 6% in 1995. Can you see we've pulled out all the important information here? Can you see the comparing words? There's the first word is a comparing word, yes. And there's another one. Yeah, apart from. Yeah, so you must have these. And there's another one, after, after reaching. Yeah, we're comparing this and that. Yeah, apart from is another one. And can you see the vocab, the interesting vocab? Grew consistently, that's nice, rather than just grew. Can you spot some other ones? Slight fall. Yeah, and declined marginally. This is good vocab. All right, so if you forget to include the data, if you just say it rose, it fell, you will get band five for your task achievement. It's not good, right? You want to include all the numbers. Yeah, now we have to finish. We haven't quite finished it yet. The last paragraph, or it can be the after the introduction, up to you is this paragraph. Overall, despite the relatively small proportion of Japanese tourists coming to Australia, the Japanese tourist market corresponded closely with the growth in Japanese tourism overseas generally, with a trebling of both in a 10-year period. So in this is what we call the overview. You must include this. It's like summarizing everything with no numbers. Can you see any actual data in there? No, right? Yeah, so we must have this sentence. Usually it's just one sentence comparing everything. If you forget the overview, if you leave it out, you will also get five. So it's very important. Yeah, so that's how you do your task one. You must have 150 words minimum. You've got to have your overview. Yeah, so either the overview can be second after the introduction or last, up to you. Pull out the most important information and describe it with lots of numbers, not just increase, decrease. It increase to, from, and remember to compare while, whereas, similarly, after which, all of those. And the linking, often these comparisons become our linking words. We must have paragraphs. So usually task one academic has maybe four paragraphs, sometimes three. And checking for mistakes, I'll talk a bit more about that later. Yeah, so there's some common things to remember. You've got to, um, got to have those numbers. You can't just say it rose, it fell. From what to what. Never interpret. So you would never say, oh, I think more Japanese tourists are going to Australia because they like barbecues. No, no, no. Just describe what you see. You don't have to describe every single thing, just the main trends where it changes. Like we said, the start, the end, the peak, and any changes. You must have that overview. Okay. So that's your task one academic. Oh, quite a lot to think about there. But my advice is at the start, take your time. Don't worry so much about the timing. Get comfortable with doing it and then start to speed up. Okay, now let's talk to the general people, your task one, an Hi, academic, Jackie. oh yeah, the, the Shall review. I launch the poll? Yeah, yeah, the poll, the poll, All sorry, right. I forgot. Here it goes. Yeah, so we'll have the poll for academic, and then um, academic people, after this, you can have a little break and come back in about 10 minutes, and then we'll talk about task two. Yeah, but try this um, poll first. So which should you not include? Is it important to cover every piece of data? Should you have a conclusion? I didn't talk about this. I'll just let this run for a minute or so. Okay. okay just because of the timing, I'm just gonna end the poll. All right, so which should you not have? Yes, very good. Everyone says no interpretation. That's exactly right. Don't say why it's happening. Just describe what you see. We must have the overview. Must an introduction is important and all the relevant data is important. 
do you have to cover every piece of data when it's a graph no you do not yeah and do you need a conclusion actually it's optional if you want a conclusion you can have one you just kind of re summarize everything again but you don't really need one if you as long as you have the overview you must have the overview okay great so academic people have a little rest reward yourself with a snack and general let's talk about your task one but please come back in about 10 minutes Ooh. so general task one what are you doing what's your job for task one you told me before are you here yeah you're writing a letter how many words isn't conclusion similar to overview it will only be repetitive if, if you write both yes yes that's right for task one academic if you have your overview second then don't you don't need it that's why it, you don't have to have it exactly 150 words yes for your letter yes so let's get into it you have a much easier job so this is what it looks like now remember IELTS is all about following instructions so it tells you how to start so just just start that way so here it says begin your letter dear sir or madam okay and then let's just read what it what it looks like i mean read the topic there have been some problems with public transport in your area recently write a letter to the manager of public transport company in your letter describe the problems explain how they're affecting the public suggest the changes that could be made okay so in your letter really you just have three jobs okay so first job is to work out how you start and who you're writing to so dear sir or madam oh this popped up again let me just get rid of that uh, dear sir or madam and um who are you writing to who are you writing to letter to the manager manager of the public transport company okay so always check that now do we know this person What's our relationship? We probably don't know them, right? And we're starting dear sir or madam. So what should the tone be? This is the first job, work out your tone. What's the tone gonna to be? More formal, that's right. Okay, so good, that's the first job, tone. Next job is to work out why we're writing this letter, what we call the purpose. The purpose is always at the top here, the overall purpose. There have been some problems with public transport in your area recently. So why are we writing to the manager of the public transport company? Usually we can say the purpose with a two. Two, why are we writing? In a way, complain, but it's more like to discuss the problems with public transport or to point out, yeah, because we're concerned. Yep, that's our purpose. So that's our second job, work out the purpose. Third job is to make sure we fully understand the bullets. How many bullets? Always three. Discuss the problems. Explain how the problems are affecting the public. Suggest the changes that could be made. So three jobs. Careful with this S. If it's problems, we have to think of at least two, usually two, yeah, not one. Now, this is when the letter you have to think, use your imagination a bit, but make it real. Don't write anything ridiculous like there are, there are monsters on the bus. Because it's, it, I mean, yes, it's very creative, but it's not realistic. The letter needs to be realistic. Okay. Yeah, so the three rules of writing. Now, the letter is, far, is not that hard, Marietta. Don't sweat. It's okay. <laughs> you have your purpose. Make sure you cover the bullets properly and keep the tone correct and that's it really with the letter it's not that hard so let's look at a model so they told us to start dear sir or madam so here we go first paragraph i am a resident of newtown i'm writing to draw your attention to recent problems with public transport in our area can you see the purpose the purpose should be in the first paragraph so with a more formal letter it's easier please re-show the previous slide the purpose cover all the bullets and keep your tone yeah just remember tone bullets purpose okay all right so can you see the purpose here usually with a two to draw your attention to recent problems okay so the first paragraph will have 
will have the purpose. And we usually start with some background about ourselves. You don't need the name, you just say who you are. I am a resident of Newtown, I'm writing to draw your attention. First paragraph. Next paragraph will be the first bullet. So we have to think of the problems with the public transport. Can you see that we've used a linker, two linkers to introduce the problems? Using linking words is good. Can you see the linking words? Briefly, can you spot the other linking word? Furthermore, yeah, so what are the problems? Roadworks have led to long delays. New weekend bus timetable has dramatically reduced frequency of buses. So very real, realistic problems. Yeah, good. Second bullet point is the effect on the public. And we've written a topic sentence so that it's clear what this paragraph is about. The effect of these actions becomes very obvious during peak hours on Wednesdays and busy shopping hours, high level of public concern. Public transport users find it takes 20 minutes more to travel the length of the road. Another linker for the second effect. Shoppers who travel by bus on Saturday mornings to shop in Newtown find it's not worth the trouble, leading to a drastic downturn in retail trade in the town. So remember that the examiner is also looking at your vocab. Can you spot some more interesting vocabulary in this paragraph? There's some nice examples. Yeah, drastic downturn, very nice. Any other ones? So I quite like this high level of public concern. Like you could just write, people are worried, but this is, sounds a bit more sophisticated, doesn't it? Yeah, so think about your vocab. Now the third, third paragraph and the third bullet, the suggestions, more than one. May I suggest that buses be rerouted along Great East Road till roadworks are complete? I would also, linking word to introduce the second um, suggestion, recommend a, a return to the old weekend timetable. I'm sure these steps would be warmly welcomed by both users of public transport and local shopkeepers. So the third paragraph is one, two, three. The fourth paragraph is the third bullet point. Last paragraph, we're pointing to the next step. What happens next? I look forward to receiving your response to my suggestions. Sign off because it's a letter. Dear sir or madam, yours faithfully, the tone matches. So you don't want to say, dear sir or madam, cheers. It will sound funny. And then the name. Okay, so that's really how you do the letter. It's not that tricky. But you must make sure you cover all the bullet points. If you forgot the suggestion, you just left that out, you would get a band four. Make sure you cover the bullet points. Make sure your tone is correct and the same all the way through. So more formal here. Now, in your, um, in your pack, you'll see an example written by a real candidate, uh, and it's for this actual question. And this person got a 6.5. So you can see what a 6.5 looks like. Basically, what held this person back from a 7 is the, vote, the grammar, too many grammar mistakes. There's some comments here <clears throat> from the examiner. Yeah, so I won't go through it now, but just you can have a look in your own time. Okay, good. So just some overall advice for task one in general. Analyze the task. Okay, look for the look at those three things we said, the tone, the purpose and the bullets. Check like problems in the bullets. So if you talk about problems, not just one problem. The purpose should be in the first paragraph. The letter should have paragraphs, usually five. The last paragraph we point to the future. <clears throat> make sure you get the right tone. So check, who am I writing to? And um, how do I start? How do they tell me to start? This should give you your tone and keep it the same. Try not to copy the words in the topic. Try to use synonyms if you can. Yeah, so just start how they tell you. Dear sir or madam or dear dot, dot, dot. When it's dot, 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 you just make up a name. No need for address. Make sure your closing and opening match. So that's your task one general. Shall we do the poll? All right, here it goes. <laughs> so here we go, just to see if you are listening. So I hope academic people are back. We're going to start on the essay very soon. <coughs> oh. 
I'll just let that run. And if you have any questions, please feel free to put them into the chat. So that although we spend a bit of time on task one, it is not the most important part of the writing test. We're going to talk about that now, which is task two. Task two is worth 66%. So we really want to focus on task two. Okay, I'm just going to end the poll for now. Let's have a look. Which three things must you think about? Purpose, tone, British spelling. Yeah, you can use British or American spelling. Both are fine. Purpose, tone, cover or bullets. Yes, that's right. Yeah, long sentences. Of course, if you can write long sentences correctly, then that's great, more complicated grammar. But that's, if you can't, then just try to use some more complex things like with although, however, while, yeah. Now in an informal letter, it is okay to use these contractions. Sometimes your letter topic is informal, write to a friend. Now that's weird because usually we just send a WhatsApp, wouldn't we? But when you write, you still must write in a full sentence, but you can use these contractions to make it more informal. Don't, can't, isn't. Um, okay, how many words? If you write more than 150, it's totally fine. You, but careful with your time. You just, the minimum is 150. But if you write 170, no problem. That's great. That's probably good. Yeah, last one. Should you use, in a formal letter, should you use really formal phrases? That's a trick question. Don't do that. Remember the letter should sound real, like you would really send it in Australia or Canada or wherever. So don't use these old fashioned fancy phrases. Make sure it, of course, you want something like drastic downturn. That's nice, but that sounds natural. It's got to sound natural that like you would really send it. Okay, great. If you're on paper test, can you cross out wrong words? Of course, on the paper based test, you can just draw a line through. It's fine. They're used to that. They're totally used to that. Okay, great. So let's move on with the essay because it's worth a lot more. This is what you really want to focus on. You want to do your task one quickly within 20 minutes and move on. Now the topics are slightly different, but the method is the same. Yeah, so with the essay, there are kind of three main types, really. Sometimes they ask you to give your opinion. Sometimes you have to discuss something. And sometimes there are a few little questions you have to answer. But again, the biggest tip is follow the instructions. So let's have a look at a few of these types. So when it's your opinion, here is one of these uh, essays. So you're writing minimum of 250 words and you should spend 40 minutes. Our job always for the essay is give reasons and examples. Every single essay, you must give reasons and examples. That's your job. Okay. So here's the typical topic. This part here is our subject. Children who are brought up in families that do not have large amounts of money are better prepared to deal with problems of adult life than children brought up by wealthy parents. To what extent do you agree or disagree with this opinion? Okay, so here is our topic, what we're talking about. And what I usually do for myself is I just say it in my mind, in my own words. So what does it mean? So children who aren't so rich, um, they can cope better when they grow up than rich kids. Hmm. That's our topic. And here are our instructions. To what extent do you agree or disagree? So asking for our opinion. How much do you agree or disagree with this? So that's what we have to put in the essay. Are you using pencil? Yes, you will use pencil and, you, um, and it, it will usually have an eraser. But if you want to, you can still cross out. It's totally fine. Yeah. Uh, okay, so sorry, back to this. So our instruction here is how much do we agree or disagree with this opinion? And so it's important that you think about that when you answer, you have to ask yourself, how much do I agree or disagree? Then you have to think of reasons and examples. So not just one reason, usually three to make it a good essay. Okay, so let's look at this one. This is a real one that got a band eight. So that's a high score. And this is an academic topic. So part of the reason why it got a band eight is because it's very clear in terms of the structure. You can see the nice six separate paragraphs and the reasons are very good. 
So let's quickly have this, I won't read the whole thing, we'll just go through it quickly. So first of all, there's an introduction and the person is giving their position. I agree to the statement that children brought up in poor families are better prepared to deal with problems of adult life. The little problem with this is that they didn't rewrite the topic. Don't try not to copy the topic. Yeah, it's better if you rewrite the topic in your own words, but they gave their position. Now here are the reasons. Children of poor parents are prematurely exposed to problems of adult life. And here's an example. It would be better to write for example, but anyway, for example, learning to survive on a low family income and sacrificing luxuries for essential items. Children begin to see the realities of life. So then this person is expanding on their reason. So that's what we want to do. The second reason, these children are taught necessary skills for survival as an adult from an early age. Many children, for example, again, another example, work on the weekends, yeah? Oh, here, a good example is many children who accompany their parents to sell produce at the market. And that's the second reason. Third reason, children of poor families are highly motivated and set high goals, yeah? An example would be Mr. Bill Gates. Did he have an impoverished background? I'm not sure about that, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Nice vocabulary, impoverished background. Okay, then this person considers the other side. However, there are some problems that children from poor backgrounds encounter, robbed of their childhood, and then a conclusion. So this is a very nice, clear structure with really good uh, reasons and examples. And that's why it got a band eight. Okay, so let's look at another type of essay. This is a different type. So some people believe increasing popularity of shopping as a leisure activity is a positive trend. Others believe it is harmful to individuals. Discuss both these views and give your own opinion. So here's our topic. Some people think shopping is getting more popular and that's really good. Others think it's bad yeah, for people, for individuals. So how many, these are our instructions. How many things do we have to do in this essay? How many things do we do? Discuss both these views and give your own opinion. Three, yes, really three things. So we discuss each view and then give our opinion. So view one is always starts with some. Some people think shopping is getting more popular and it's very good. And view two starts with others. Others think it's harmful to people. And then we give our own opinion, what we think. And maybe you have a mixture, like a bit of both. You know, it can be harmful to people, but it can also be good. Yeah, so that's what we have to do in that essay. Um, and then we have to think of our reasons and examples again. Now, another type, it's similar topic, but our instructions are different. Shopping is becoming more and more popular as a leisure, as a leisure activity. However, some people feel this has positive and negative effects. Why is shopping so popular? What effects does its increase in popularity have on individuals and society? So how many things do we have to do in this essay? We have two questions here that we have to answer. Four, you could say four maybe, yeah. Kind of three or four, yeah. Because, because we have to be careful. We have to think of how it gets more popular and how this affects individuals and society. And I guess if you want to consider positive and negative effects, yeah, you could also consider that. So let's look at another model. So that essay topic is a general. So you see it's a bit different. The topic is a little bit more straightforward. And this one also got a band eight. So I think it's written by a girl, you know, just from the writing. So this one is very uh, well, the reasons again are very good. I personally think this first paragraph is too long. In IELTS, try to keep your paragraphs to a maximum of about six lines. Yeah, so if it's getting long like this, you can break it into another paragraph. But I mean, it's still got a band-aid. Um, so let's have a look again at why it's good. This is in your pack as well to have a look at. Shopping is very popular among the majority of the population despite their age or social standards. This is due to the fact that people, so I remember our first thing was why is it popular? So it would be better if this is the introduction, 
to make this a new paragraph because now the person's giving the reasons. Yeah, it makes a difference to their everyday life. Pleasure, it gives them pleasure. They can meet friends. Yeah, so they've given reasons here. Yeah. And then in the next paragraph, they consider the effect on the individual. Remember, it nourishes self esteem. And then they are considering the effect on society. That's the other thing they have to look at, right? People encouraged to go into business. Yeah. Um, and then job opportunities here, another effect of the increase in popularity on society. And then the conclusion. Honestly, I don't think this conclusion is that great. I find shopping an interesting and pleasurable experience. Um, the conclusion really in an IELTS essay should summarize all the points again. They didn't ask her for the, the opinion in this essay. They didn't say, what do you think about shopping? So this is not quite accurate to me. So it would be better in the conclusion to just summarize all the points. Okay. So just some overall tips. Remember task two is worth 66%. So we want to spend most of the time on that. When you look at the topic, make sure you know what your instructions are. Is it opinion? Is it discussion? Or is it a mixture? Think about your paragraphs. Think about your structure. Usually the IELTS essay has four or five paragraphs. We want to think again about grammar and vocab. Um, yeah, so work out what are you actually supposed to do? What, is, what are your instructions? The linking words are important to make it flow. If you run out of time, do not put notes or bullets because you'll lose marks. You must always in the writing write in full sentences. Now checking. What I suggest you do is maybe you have very good grammar and spelling, so no worries. But if you don't, what I suggest you do is write an essay, a practice, give it to someone who has really good grammar and spelling and get them to correct it. Then you'll start to learn what your common mistakes are and what you need to look out for in the test. Okay, so that is the writing. So can we have the poll? Um, in the computer test, can you do the essay first? Yes, you can do them. And the same in the uh, paper test. You can do task two first if you want to. Just be careful because a lot of people who do task two first then run out of time for task one. And their task one is really bad. You want to make sure, see, I prefer to do task one quickly and get it done and then focus on task two. Yeah, but if you want to do it first, you can. Okay, just let this run a little bit longer. Are we doing academic or general? So for the, for the essay, it's academic and general. We talked about it together. The first topic we looked at about what extent do you agree or disagree with the children from poor families, that's an academic topic. The topic about shopping, that's a general topic. You see the difference is just in the topics, but the method that we use is the same. All right, so let's have a look at the poll. So you have to write exactly 250 words. No, you can write more. 250 is the minimum. If you can write 270, that's great, but you don't have to. Should you count each word? Yeah. So on computer delivered, there's a word count. So that's good. Paper-based, no. Work out how many words you write on one line and then work out how many lines you need to do. Don't waste your time counting words. If you run out of time, you can put your ideas in point form. No, you must write in full sentences, okay, through the whole test. Yeah. Okay, good. So that's writing and speaking. And we'll see that we spent a, quite a lot of time on that because there's so much to talk about with those two tests. Now we'll talk about listening and we'll reading. Is, does A count as a word? Yeah, an article, that's a word. Yep, that counts. So we'll see that listening and reading are also very similar. They're similar to each other. Yeah, so listening and reading are marked by uh, just a, a marker and the answer is either right or wrong. There's no leeway. Also, the listening and reading tests are full of tricks and traps. 
So we have to be very focused. Listening is the first test you do. How many times do you hear it? How many times do you hear the listening? Only once, that's why it's annoying. Yeah, so we need strategies. But good news is the questions always go in order. They never go backwards. Yeah, so, okay, let's think about the listening. How much will grammar affect the band score? So remember, there are four things that the examiners look at, one of which is grammar. So it, it's 25% of your writing and your speaking. So if your grammar is not very good, but for example, your vocabulary is excellent, you can kind of, you know, skew it so that you use your very, very good vocab to overcome your not so good grammar. But if it isn't very good, then I would work on it, really try to work on your grammar. Okay, so let's talk about um, listening. So listening is the same test for academic and general. Yeah, it's the actual test is 30 minutes. And 40 questions, four sections. It gets more difficult. Part one and part two are kind of okay and more social. Part three, part four are more academic. And you, so you want to get most of your points in the first half. To get a seven, you need about uh, 30 to 31 out of 40. To get an eight, you need 35 out of 40. Yeah, so you can write in capital letters for the reading and listening if you want to. You don't have to, but you can, up to you. So I thought we would just try uh, part of a listening. Um, this, this is actually in your masterclass, but if you could type the answers into the chat, as we go through. Um, so when you do the listening, you are given uh, time to look at the questions. And it's very, very important to follow instructions in the listening. So let's have a quick look at this. This is what we'll listen to. Complete the form, that's our instructions. Write one word and or a number. So this is all often in listening. What does it mean? Can you write one word? Yes. Can you write two words? Can you write two words? No. But can you write one word plus one number? Yes. And you can write a number by itself. So when they say a number, a phone number is one number. A credit card number is one number. Yeah. Okay. Then they give you some time to look at the questions. So what should we do? We need to start to predict and we need to think about synonyms. Sometimes the word they say and the word that we write down, are they the same or are they different? Yeah, so that's, so sometimes this is from part one of a test where you often have to fill in a form. So let's have a quick look. Date, so Saturday, so that's gonna be some kind of date, right? Probably a number and a month. Time, time, tickets, three adults, one child, seats in the, so in a theater, they have different parts of the theatre, right? So seats in the which part? Yeah, we can try to guess or predict. And with this word, the, it means it's a thing, isn't it? It's a noun, right? Seat row number. Okay, so seat row and number. You know, in theatres, they have a row and then a number. So we, that's what we're listening for. Post, total payment, card details, type. So that could be visa, number. And then the name, so they're going to give us a name. Additional requests, put on the mailing list. So this shows us the pattern. Put on the mailing list, so verb and then um, the rest of the phrase. Book something. Yeah. How do you write currency in computer base? So usually, okay, so like here, this pound symbol, you don't have to write that down because it's already there. You would just write 50. You don't need the currency because it's already there. In fact, it would be wrong if you repeated the currency. Yeah, so that's a good question, so be careful. All right, so let's have a listen. And you, you can write the um, answers in the chat as we go through. So this is the easier part of the test, part one, just to give you a warm up. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to four. Hello, Theatre Royal Plymouth. Oh, uh, hello. I'd like to make a booking, please. Yes. 
What is it you want to see? The imposter. Right. And which day did you want to come? Friday the 25th. Just a moment and I'll check availability on the computer. Oh, sorry, we're fully booked for that performance. Oh dear. Um, what about the following day then? The 26th? Yes, that's okay. We've got two performances on that day. One at 3.30 and one at 7. Which would you prefer? Oh, the later one, please. Mm -hmm. How many people? Well, there are four of us. Are there any concessions? Any children? Oh, I'm not sure. Uh, my daughters are 15 and 12. Do they get concessions? Only the 12-year-old, I'm afraid. So that's one child and three adults. Any idea where you'd like to sit? Stalls or circle? Uh... Tickets for the stalls are a bit more expensive. £12 for adults and £8 and £8.50 for children. The circle costs £10.50 and £6.50. Do you get a good view from the circle? Oh, yes. And in fact, we've got some seats left at the front, if you'd like those. Right. We'll go for those, then. Right. That's seats A21 to 24, then. They're very good seats. That sounds fine. So let's see, that comes to £38 altogether for the tickets. How do you want to collect them? Shall I put them in the post? They'd be sent today by first class mail and there'd be an additional charge of £1 to cover postage and administration. Or do you want to get them from the box office yourself? Oh yes, could you send them please? No problem. That'll be £39 altogether. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 5 to 10. Yeah, sorry, because we have to kind of change this, there was actually, in the real test, there is a question with the amount, but we've taken it out just for this practice. So sorry about that. Yeah, we'll go through the answers in a minute. I think because I've already been through this with you, I'll just move it on. And the number are details. Card details. Could I just take your card details? What kind of card is it? Visa? Switch? Mastercard. Okay. And the number? It's 3290-5876-4401-2899. Okay. And the name on the card, please? It's Mr. J. Witten, W-H-I-T-T-O-N. N for never or M for mother? N for never. Thank you. And now I've nearly finished, but I just need your address and postcode. Yes, it's 42 South Street. OK. Is that Plymouth? London. And the postcode? It's... SW2 5GE. That's fine then. The ticket should be with you tomorrow. Is there anything else I can do for you? Yes. I was wondering if I could get regular information about what's on. Certainly. I can just add your name to our mailing list. Would that be okay? That would be very good. Yes, please. Oh, and there is something else. Sorry. One of our group is hard of hearing, and I've heard that you can supply special headphones. That's right. As long as you tell us in advance, we can always do that. I'll book those for you now, and you can just collect them from the box office before the show. Thanks very much for your help. No problem. Thank you for calling. Thank you. Bye. OK, good. So I saw some good answers. That is the end of section one. And so at the end of each section in the listening test, you have time, they give you half a minute to check all your answers and make sure, what are you checking? Your spelling. Listening is also a spelling test. The spelling must be correct. You're checking your, um, you must, don't leave a question blank. If you don't know, just guess. So put something. If you're doing paper-based, make sure you can read your writing because later on you have to transfer your answers onto the answer sheet. Okay, so let's have a look at the answers. I see some no, good answers. Now, I'm just gonna put all the answers up. 
and we can talk, oops, sorry, and we can discuss which any that you are wondering why that's the answer. I did see this one. Careful, it's one of the tricks in the listening. Is it plural or singular? He said headphones with an S. So if you had headphone, we don't say that in English, so you wouldn't get the, the mark. The headphones are always two. So headphones. Yeah, and it was MasterCard, not master. So write down what they say, MasterCard. Also, some people put circles, but they didn't, it's not called circles, it's called the circle. And then some people forgot that there's a row number. Row is the letter and then the number. Yeah, in number four, do you really need, uh, yeah, you need, the, row, the A is the row number, you know, like A, B, C, D, like in a theater, they have rows. So yeah, you do need that, yeah. Yeah, okay, so this is part one of the test, just to give you a taste. Um, okay, so just some overall tips. You're always given a bit of time to look ahead. So predict what your answers are going to be. Make sure you read the instructions. In the paper base, you can underline the keywords that you're listening for. And it's good to think of synonyms. What might they say that has the same meaning? Can you just write seven? Yeah, that, that should be fine. With numbers, it's, it's okay. Um, in the 26th, for the number one in the question just now, you can put it as 26 or 26th. Both are okay, that's all right. Yeah, so questions are always in order. So if you miss one, just, just don't worry about it and get ready for the next one. Careful about that word limit. Remember it said only one word this time. And they kind of guide you through the listening. They move you to the next question, the next topic. So you kind of know where you are. They often say a word from the next question. So you kind of know, oh, we're moving to this question. So that's the listening. Yeah, oh, you forgot to type master. <laughs> yeah, so you need the card if you're having master, not because he didn't say master, he said master card. Okay, so let's look at the poll. And with the listening, it's good to practice. So like if you find it hard, <clears throat> try to do one section every day and you will improve actually quite fast. You also have to get used to the IELTS style. Uh, maps with listening, yeah, maps can be hard. Maps, you have to listen to the direction words. So when they say uh, next to this is that, on the other side, you know, in front, or sometimes if they have the compass, then you have to think about like south, west, east. They are a bit challenging. If you Google, you can find IELTS listening map practice questions. You just Google that, you'll be able to find some to practice with. Okay, so let's have a look at the poll. How many sections are there? Yeah, there are four and it gets harder. So we looked at the easiest part, but you want to try to get most of your points in part one and part two. Yeah, so it gets more difficult after question 20. So the spelling doesn't matter. It, it does matter. The spelling matters. Listening is a spelling test. If you spell it wrong, you won't get the mark. So it's a bit unfair. So we have to think about our spelling. Yeah. Okay, good. So let's move on to reading. We'll see that reading and listening are very similar. <clears throat> reading is listen is different. Uh, reading is different from uh, for academic and general. Yeah. And the thing with the reading is it's a race against time. How long is the reading? Do you know? And how many parts is, are there? It's one hour, yeah, and three parts. Now, the thing that's challenging with the reading is you have to read about 2,000 words. So there's a lot to read. So you have to read and answer 40 questions. And general and academic are different. General is quite a lot easier, but it's harder to get a seven. You have to get 34 out of 40 to get a seven. For academic, you have to get 30 out of 40 to get a seven. All right, so... So academic, 
So you're reading three, there are three different passages, which are kind of academic topics. And then general, you have many different kinds of things that you read. It can be like a brochure, it can be a TV guide, it could be a map or like, um, it could be a museum pamphlet. Yeah, but the third passage is always an article as well. Okay, so with the reading, we have, remember we are racing against time. So we're trying to find the information as quickly as we can. The good news with the reading is the answer is always in the passage. So you're trying to find it, that's the secret. But we need to use these different skills to be able to find information quickly and to be accurate, especially because we're reading a lot of words. What is in reading general? General reading, you you could be reading many different things. So it could be like a it could be like a TV guide, it could be a brochure, it could be instructions how to use something, it could be small advertisements, and then the third passage in reading is one longer article. Yeah. Okay. So in the reading test, there are many different question types, um, but these are some of the main types. The good news is that the ones with a star, multiple choice identifying and short answer and sentence completion, they go in order. So the first question is gonna be near the top of the passage. Second question, a bit further down. So that's kind of good. Now in the reading, we always have this kind of question. True, false, not given. Yes, no, not given. And it's quite tricky. It's in academic and general. So we're just gonna show you one of those just so you get a very short one, just so you get the feeling of it. So do the following statements agree with the information in the passage? True, false, not given. Yeah. Aboriginal Australians are descendants from inhabitants of Africa. Ancestors of Aborigines settled in Australia 80,000 years ago. Aboriginal Australians are the most genetically diverse race in the world. So I usually look at the questions first, just very quickly, so I get an idea about what the passage is about. It's about Aboriginal Australian people, right? Now, the next thing we do is we skim, we read quickly through the passage. Of course, it's usually much longer. Why? To give an idea of what each paragraph is about. So have a quick read of that. I'll just give you a minute. Yeah, you can write T instead of true. Yeah, that's all right. Have a quick read. And after we've skimmed through and read, I mean, usually you read the whole passage, which is much longer. <clears throat> then we use our next skill, which is scanning. So we read the question, Aboriginal Australians are descended from the inhabitants of Africa. So if, if this is true, it means that the information in the passage and this information is the same. If it's false, it means this information and the information in the passage are the opposite, not the same. And then not given means there's, we can't find that information in the passage. Yeah. So um, remember that with true, false, not given, it goes in order. So first question will be near the top. Aboriginal Australians are descendant from the inhabitants of Africa. So is it true, false or not given? got a true, we've got a not given. Now careful, not given doesn't come up all that often. So modern humans ventured out of Africa. Australian Aboriginals were part of this migration. It's true, it means the same thing. Yeah, just saying it in a different way. So Aboriginals were also part of that migration from Africa, so it is true. Next one. Ancestors of Aborigines settled in Australia about 80,000 years ago. So the next question will be further down. Okay, so we've got people saying false, but there's an 80,000 here, but that's not when they settled, is it? That's when they ventured. See, they always try to trick you. So this part is here. They arrived or settled 50,000 years ago. So you're right, it's false. Aboriginal Australians are the most genetically diverse race in the world. So there will be further down. Oh, here's diversity. Greater genetic diversity, Aboriginal people in the East and West. 
and people in culturally diverse. Hmm. So this one is not given because it doesn't say that they're the most diverse in the world. It just says that there's diversity between the Aborigines and the East and the West. And then there's culturally diverse. See, they're trying to trick you. We're not talking about culturally diverse. Yeah. So, yeah, so just so be careful. So the thing about um, the reading, yeah, things to look out for as synonyms. So I know someone's saying that they feel that it's not given because settled and arrived is not the same, but I think that's enough similar that they can be seen as synonyms. Yeah. Now, careful also with the tricks. They call them distractors, but I call them tricks. Genetic diversity and culturally diverse is not the same. They're trying to confuse you. So reading test does have a lot of tricks in it. <clears throat> so when we do reading, we have to use these skills. So skim the whole thing, scan, zoom in where you think the information is, and then check, read for detail. Isn't at least 5,000, could be 80,000. No, you need to be more precise than that. You can't say that at least 5,000 is the same as 80,000. 80, it needs to be more exact than that. Yeah. So if you're doing paper-based, you can underline the important keywords, names, dates, facts. On the computer, you have a highlighter tool. You can do that too if you want. Um, always check, same as listening, how many words can you use? Sometimes there'll be like weird words that you may not know. It's usually not, that's not gonna be part of the question, but it's a good way to build your vocab. Don't get stuck on a question. If you can't do it after about, 45 seconds or so just move on because you're rushing against time and never leave an answer blank if you really don't know just guess yes in the computer based test there's a highlighter tool you can highlight the keywords there's also a note taking tool you can take notes as well all right so we've covered all the four tests fantastic now just to summarize when you're preparing, of course, practice tests are important, but try to use and have as much English around you as you can. What do you all do to have more English around you? I'm very curious. You want to tell me in the chat, like maybe some people watch, uh, listen to podcasts. Some people find a conversation buddy. What do you all do to, to have more English? Reading books, fantastic. Netflix, yes. So think about your goal and what band score you need and how long it's gonna take you. Choose which test you're gonna do. We spent quite a lot of, bit of time talking about the scoring, so think about that. You, especially writing and speaking, those four skills that you need to have. Um, we also have preparation courses. If you go to the IDP website for your country, you'll see that there are partner courses. If you feel like you need an IELTS course, you need more. So we've got TED Talks, TED Talks are great. Movies without subtitles. Uh, you can't bring any note paper into the computer-based test. They will give you some rough paper to take notes. Yeah, so don't worry that you'll have rough paper, but you can't bring anything in. Webinars, friends. How many accents? So in the listening test, they will have different accents of English accents, but most people find them quite clear. Yeah, they often have you know, different accents, different English speakers. So moving up a band does take time because you think about how long it took you to learn your first language. Refining a language, it's, it, we, we wish it were like three in one coffee, but it isn't. It's a lot of practice and just keeping on doing it. Yeah, and just surrounding yourself with English. So all those things that you say you're doing, fantastic, fantastic. So we always want to keep challenging ourselves. And if your test is coming up, try to do a bit Make a timetable, do something almost every day, whether it's half an hour, an hour, you know, and, and mix it up. One day you can do a bit of speaking and a reading. Next day you can do a bit of writing. Next day you can do listening like that. So here are some resources. When you do your test with IDP, you can, um, you get access to IELTS Essentials materials, which are really comprehensive way of preparing. So there's a, a website, Facebook page, practice tests, tips, blogs, and videos. 
Can you adjust the headphone volume? Yes, you can. Um, if you're doing computer delivered, you most certainly can. Okay, good. So we've covered the material and we have lots of time for questions. So regarding computer tests, is there zoom in, zoom out function to make oh, I've missed the questions fit in the screen? Yeah, you can change the size. Yes, you can indeed. Yeah, I might just stop my share so we can have more questions. Let's see, can you bring a watch? No, no watches because nowadays people, you know, watches can record things. So no watches in the test. There'll be a clock though. Oh, the reading poll. Yeah, I forgot. Thank you. So let's just see the reading review. Do you still receive paper in computer tests? Yes, you'll have some scrap paper in the computer-based test to take notes. So you can, yes. A timer per question on the reading. No, in the reading, you have to manage your time. So really try to monitor so that you have 20 minutes maximum on each passage. But remember, reading gets harder. So you want to try to get most of your points earlier on. Headphones are provided, yes. Uh, the IELTS Essentials website is IELTSessentials.com. When you register to do your IELTS with IDP, they will give you some kind of um, access code so that you can access more of it. Yeah. Okay, let me just end the poll. So we've got how many sections in the reading test? Yeah, there are three and it gets harder. Is section one harder? No. So section three is the hardest. You want to get most of your points in section one and two. So when you do reading, we need skimming, scanning, and reading for detail. Yeah, you don't need to understand every word to get the answer. And you don't need general knowledge because the answer's in the passage. So we're trying to skim the whole thing to get an idea, scan to zoom into where the answer is, and read carefully to check. Yeah, so that's that. Ah, let's see, break between each skill. No, that's, remember I said at the start, the uh, listening, reading and writing, it's all one, one long thing, except that they stop the test and start the test in between. Um, we have, if we're writing task two, usually there are four or five paragraphs and it goes with the topic. The, the instructions will give you your structure. So for example, if it's an opinion essay, you need your introduction, then you give your, the reasons for your opinion then maybe you can consider the other side in the third paragraph and then the conclusion. Yeah, so usually the instructions will give you your structure. We have a writing webinar separate, so you can join our writing webinar for a lot more detail on that. Clock in the testing room, most definitely. You will know what time it is, definitely. Um, probably is IELTS essential slide. Okay, hold on. Uh, listening and computer paste, yes, you can have note paper if you want to, but be careful with the listening test because, um, because, there you go, if you take your eyes off the screen, you may miss an answer. So if, I, I think that's hard to manage myself, maybe you know how to do it, but I think it's a bit tricky. Um, yeah. Okay, so I think, thank you for all the questions here. Um, we want, usually we do some live questions. So if someone wants to, has a live, burning live question, I'm very happy to answer. And there are a couple of questions in the Q&A box. Let me have a look at those. In the speaking test, should you introduce yourself? No, you don't introduce yourself in the speaking test. Just in the speaking test, they will ask you, uh, they may ask you, do you work or are you a student? Then you can talk about like three ideas, usually three points, two or three points for each question. So you can say whether you work or whether you're a student and what you do. Yeah, but you don't introduce yourself. It doesn't work like that. When you speak, can you read the notes you wrote? Yes, in part two of the speaking, when you write notes, you should look at those and you should look at the topic. You don't need even to look at the examiner. Yeah. How to differentiate false statement and not given in the reading test? Yes, that is, can be tricky. False means that the information is there, but it's not the same. Not given means you cannot find it at all. 
but not given is not so common. So don't assume it's not given, okay? So really check, is it false? Yeah. Uh, does the speaking, does the examiner tell you it's part two? Um, no, the examiner won't say, oh, it's part two now. The examiner will say, now I'm going to give you a topic. That's how you know it's part two. And then in part, the end of part two, they'll collect everything back and they'll say, we've been talking about blah, blah. And I'd like to ask you some general questions. Then you know it's part three. Yeah, that kind of goes through smoothly. Is it banned to use the word you in the speaking test? No, I don't really understand that question. It's definitely not banned. Eye contact, no, eye contact is not necessary in speaking. Remember only four things, grammar, vocab, fluency and coherence, pronunciation. You can look down at the table for the whole thing if you want to. I mean, it's a bit strange, but they don't mark you on that. Uh, you don't use a pen in the writing test. You just use whatever they give you. Okay, you can't take anything into the test. Yeah, you can't bring anything into the speaking test. Everything will be given to you. Okay, so we have a hand raised, I think, if we'd like to have a question. Lulette, I'm not sure. Do you want to do that? Uh, sure, Jackie. Yeah, thank you so much. So before we begin the live journey, maybe we can entertain two or three live questions. And uh, prior to that, I would like to inform everyone that uh, those who are taking a computer delivered IELTS test or IELTS on computer, or those who are still undecided if you will take IELTS on computer or paper, please stay with us until this session. If you have time, feel free to stay and we will play some video tutorials of taking an IELTS on computer test. All right. So if you have any remaining burning questions, please feel free, feel free to raise your hand and we will allow you to unmute your mic. Come on, guys, don't be shy. This is your time, this is your chance, and this session is yours, actually. Anyone? Okay, so we have one here. Very angry uh, one. Hi, Ferry. Hi, thank you for taking my Hi. question. Hi. Uh, I was wondering about, uh, you say before that for speaking test, we have, there are four uh, main uh, criteria that we have to, we have to fulfill. Uh, you said before that if we want to get a score six, we have to get six in each uh, criteria. Uh, my question is how about, how if I have, uh, let's say I have uh, seven in lexical resource, but I only have uh, five on uh, another uh, criteria. Can it can can it uh, be can it to uh, I mean can it uh, fulfill another criteria? If yes, I get... yes. Yeah. So it's kind of a numbers game. IELTS is kind of like a numbers game. So if so, there are four things for writing. So maybe your grammar is not that great, so you get six. But maybe your vocabulary is very good, so you get or you, is good, so you get seven, yeah. Or just yeah, maybe you got, or maybe like you said, you got five for the grammar, seven for the vocab, six six. If you add that up and take the average, it will come out as six. So yes, you can you, you can do that, and you that's why you should really understand what you're good at and what you need to improve on. And it's easier to get to get the six or the seven for the task response and the um, and the co the cohesion and coherence, the structure. Yeah, those ones you can. I mean, the tips that I've given you, you can you should be able to do that. Grammar and vocab takes a bit more time to work on, but you know you can. Yes, you can perform very well in one area and not so well, and still get your six or your yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's all about the numbers. Okay, thank you, Maya. Yeah, thanks for your question. Thank you, Ferry. And next one, uh, can we have Hui Tran? Hi, Hui Tran. Hi. Hello. Hi, good evening. I want to ask a question that uh, if, I, if I speak with a high base, is it considered memorizing? If you speak to the word, I'm sorry. With a high pace. A fast pace? Yeah. Um, 
it's not considered memorizing, but I, I wouldn't speak too fast because that may affect your pronunciation. You want to speak, remember we watched that, that guy, Ashish, that kind of pace is just nice and clear and steady. Speaking very fast is not necessarily a good thing. Also, you have to say more. Like, for example, in part two, if you speak very fast, you have to say a lot to fill up two minutes. So just speak at a nice, steady pace rather than too fast, especially if you have an accent. Like, uh, yeah. Uh, good accent. That, that would be my advice. Sorry? Like, you're, you're from Vietnam, right? Yeah. So Vietnam, Vietnamese English, you know, um, like you have to be quite mindful of your pronunciation that it's clear. So don't rush. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, we thank you. We do just sometimes. Sorry? We do just, just uh, talk sometimes. Yeah, well, I think it's very normal because when we all do that when we're nervous we tend to speak fast. Yeah, so a good tip is at the very start of the test, take some slow breaths before, when the examiner is checking your ID, take a few breaths and just remind yourself not too fast, nice and steady. Yeah, but that's a great question, thank you. Thank you, Hui Tran. And next one is uh, Jason Tuang Tuang. Hi, Jason. Hello, good evening. Can I be heard? Yes, yes hi, Oh, hi, Jacqueline. Thank you so Hello. much for the comprehensive discussion uh, about the four subtests. Um, good evening. By the way, it's good evening from the Philippines. Well, my question falls on the academic writing. Um, I'm not sure if you have you, if you may have discussed this one. Probably I was eating my dinner. <laughs> but anyway, um, can you please confirm that the task two in academic writing has the bulk of the score or has a higher score percentage than the task one. Thank you. Yeah, so task two is most important part of the, of the writing. Task two is worth 66%. Yeah, so you really want to focus on the essay, but you must do task one. It, you, it will pull your score down if you don't do task one. So we want to try to do task one do it quite quickly, get it finished, and move on to task two. Yeah, definitely. Okay, all clear. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for your question. Thank you, Jason. And are you okay with one more question, sure, sure. Jackie? Sure, all sure. All right. So can we have Mohammad Anas, please? Hello. Good evening. Hi, Mohammad. You may now unmute your mic. All right. Uh, I think you're already on mute, but we cannot hear you, Muhammad. Hi. Hello. Uh, hello. Hi, hello. Hi. Hello, ma'am. Yes, hi, hi ma we can hi. hear you. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, uh, good evening, ma'am. Uh, uh, my uh, first question is uh, uh, about the uh, for our modules. Uh, uh, I want to say about that uh, uh, how I can get, get uh, uh, tips and tricks for our modules uh, in the written way. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't quite catch your question. Do you mind repeating? Sorry, sorry. I, I didn't want quite... to say that uh, how I, I want to say that uh, uh, how I can get tips for our modules in a written way. Uh, how can you get tips? Um, uh, yes. Um, I think, I mean, I think this webinar, you can watch it on Facebook. Uh, yeah. There are also many tips if you go to the IDP website, there'll be many tips. And also if IELTS, I'll just put in the chat, IELTS.org, that's the official IELTS website, you'll find many tips there. Yeah, so that, the good thing about IELTS, we have a lot of support, yeah, in, in many different places. Okay. Yeah, so, okay. yeah, but you okay. can watch okay. this okay. webinar Thank again on, on Facebook if you, if you want to okay. watch it and get the tips okay. again. Okay. okay, okay, Thank you. Sure. My pleasure. 
Right, we have two so, minutes. <laughs> there are a couple of um, uh, questions in the chat that I see that maybe I'll just quickly sure. put a couple. So one person said that they speak fast as part of their personality. If you speak fast, but it's clear, it's more about how clear you are when you speak fast. If it, your pronunciation is still clear, then that's okay. Yeah. Um, and the scoring for the reading test, is it different for general and academic? No, the scoring is the same. Uh, it's just that uh, it's just in general to get band seven, you need 34 out of 40. For academic to get band seven for reading, you can get 30 out of 40. Is band six good enough to start contact with supervisor or professor? If you are a band six, I'm not sure of that question. Um, you mean you want to take lessons? Yeah, I mean, if you're already at band six, that's pretty good. Band six is competent. So you can definitely work with a, a professor. I'm not sure what you mean, sorry. Uh, let's see. Listening, does it, it's a, speed, it's a typing speed skill. So listening, when you do it computer-based, you do have to be able to type the answer. So you, but you need to be able to type anyway for the writing. So you, I wouldn't recommend you do the, list, the computer delivered test if you can't type quite fast because you're going to have to write your essay like that as well. And remember with the listening, you're not writing down 40 words, maybe two words. That's what you'll be writing down. So it's not like you're writing down a lot of words. Okay, does hand, gest do hand gestures matter? No, in the speaking, you can do a lot of gestures or no gestures. It doesn't matter, they don't mark you on that. Just be yourself. Try to be as comfortable as you can. Okay, so we still have, we have one minute. Oh, okay. A lot of smiles, that's really up to you. You can smile or not smile, you're not marked on that. Yeah, you do what makes you feel comfortable. And no one looks at your part two notes, they just get ripped up. So you can write anything there, <laughs> okay. All right, so thank you so much, everybody. And thanks to the great team, as always, for supporting this webinar, their wonderful IDP team. So you can um, be very uh, reassured when you do your test with IDP. So, okay, thank you very much, everybody. And you take care and keep safe and have, have fun preparing for your IELTS. I wish you all the best. And thank you, Lillette, so much as always. Thank you so much, Jackie, as always, for your support with us, with IDP. And thank you once again to all my lovely co-hosts, uh, Tuan uh, from Vietnam, Ruli from Indonesia, and Narirat from uh, Thailand. If you still have any pending questions, you may drop an email to seailts at idp.com, and we will get back to you. And for those who are taking their computer delivered, as we mentioned, we will play some video tutorials shortly. So all the best and stay safe, everyone. Good night. Good night. Thank you, Lila. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all. Bye. Thanks. Goodbye, everyone. All right. So I'm just sharing my screen and sharing my sound. Okay, here we go.
your answers at any time until the end of the test. Click on the yellow Welcome to our computer delivered IELTS tutorial one. This tutorial will show you how to complete and prepare for computer delivered IELTS. For each section, there's a clock at the top of the screen, which tells you how much time you have left. For the reading and writing tests, the clock will turn red and flash when you have 10 and five minutes left. The tests will automatically stop when the time finishes. The instructions for each part are in the box at the top of the screen. You can use the navigation bar at the bottom of the screen to move from one question to the next. Click on the number to go to that question. You can also click on the forward arrow to go to the next question. Or the back arrow to go to the previous question. When you have answered the question, a line will appear under that question in the navigation bar. You can click on Review if you want to look at the question again later. The question number will be shown as a circle. You can review and change your answers at any time until the end of the test. Click on the yellow arrow if you want to make the navigation bar smaller. You can use the scroll bar to see all the questions. In each of the tests, you can change the screen settings. To do this, click on the Settings tab at the top of the screen. You can change the size and colour of the text. In each of the tests, there is a Help tab. If you click on the Help tab, this will give you information about the task you are currently doing. If you click on Test Help, you will see information about how the test works. If you wish, you can also highlight sections of text. If you need to leave the test room for a few minutes, you can hide your screen by clicking on the Hide tab. When you return to the test room, click on the Resume Test button. That is the end of the introduction tutorial for Computer Delivered IELTS. Check out the IDP IELTS YouTube channel for tutorial videos for listening, reading and writing. For the listening test, you can change the volume by using the volume bar in the top right at any time during the test. For each part of the listening test, you will hear the recording once only. Some parts of the test have more than one type of question. Each type of question has its own instructions. In the listening test, listen carefully for the part number and question numbers to make sure you are looking at the right screen. For some questions, you need to write your answer in the gap. For some questions, you need to choose which diagram label, A, B, C, etc., is correct for which item listed in the table. 
For each question, click on the correct space in the table. For some questions, you need to click on an answer and move it into the gap. If you want to change an answer, move another answer into the gap. If you want to leave the question unanswered, move the question back. And for some questions, you need to move an answer into a gap on a diagram. At the end of the listening test, you'll have two minutes to check all of your answers. The tests will automatically stop when the time finishes. In the reading test, the text appears on the left and the questions on the right. To see all the text and the questions, you'll need to use both scroll bars. For some questions, you need to choose an answer. If you want to change your answer, click on a new answer. If you want to leave a question unanswered, click on the answer again. To look at the next question, just click on the question itself. For some questions, you need to choose more than one answer. If you want to change any of your answers, Click on the answer you want to change and then click on your new answer. If you want to leave any of the questions unanswered, click on the answer again. For some questions in the reading test, you need to choose which paragraph or section contains the information listed in the table. Remember to scroll to read all the text. For each question, click on the correct space in the table. If you want to change an answer, click on your new answer. If you want to leave the question unanswered, click on the answer again. For some questions in the reading test, you need to click on a heading for a paragraph or section and move it into the gap. If you want to change your answer, move another heading into the gap. If you want to leave the question unanswered, move the heading back. And for some questions, you need to write your answer on a gap in a diagram. If you wish, you can also highlight sections of text. To do this, left-click and drag your cursor over the section of text or question you wish to highlight. Then right-click and select the Highlight option. To remove highlighting from the text, right-click on the highlighted area and select Clear. If you wish to remove all highlighting from the screen, right-click on a highlighted area and select Clear All. You can also make notes on a section of text. To do this, left-click and drag the cursor over the section of text or question you want to make notes about. Then right-click and select the Notes option. Your chosen section of text will be highlighted and a yellow notepad will appear. You can write your notes on this. Click on the cross in the notepad to hide your notes. To see your notes again, click on the highlighted section of text. If you want to see which areas of highlighted text have notes, move the cursor slowly over each area of highlighted text. If a small orange box appears, 
it means that the highlighted text contains notes. To remove notes from text or questions, right-click on the highlighted area and select Clear. There are two parts to the writing test, part one and part two. You can answer the parts in either order. You write your answer in the space on the right of the screen. Your answers are saved automatically. You do not need to press enter on your keyboard. For the reading and writing tests, the clock will turn red and flash when you have 10 and 5 minutes left.